No, hands up, hands up who hasn't got it downloaded yet. Okay, that's quite a few. Um, all the Macs. All the Macs, yeah. <laughs> as usual. Okay, I'll tell you what, I'm going to have to start, start going with the course because uh, otherwise we could be, I don't know how long it's going to take. It's always the same problem with the Macs, so I'm just going to, I'm just going to do the basic stuff and uh, I'm, I'm recording these lectures. So I'm going to put them up on the website and then you can just click through and, and look at them afterwards if you want, okay? Uh, hopefully it's going to record my voice correctly, but uh, it's the first time I've tried it, so we'll just have to figure it out as we go along. Uh, okay, so today I just want to introduce the Revit interface, you know, basically to find your way around it. Uh, I'm not going to follow those projects, um, you know, those extra projects I was giving you. I'm going to go a little bit of a different way around it. Uh, I think we'll use, um, we should use some of the houses that Niels has given you just to, just to start things off. Uh, so I'll do that. I'll see if I can do that on the screen here. Uh, so basic drafting tools, how to sketch a building layout, we're going to talk about that. Uh, setting up reference grids, which are quite important. Uh, I know Niels has showed you these designs which are, which are made on kind of squared paper uh, as a kind of a shorthand to, to laying out a building. And uh, they're, they're really useful when you're designing stuff. So I'm just going to transfer that directly so there's a link between what you're doing by hand and what you're doing on, on the screen here. What we're going to talk about in terms of drawing types and how to set up drawing sheets so you can print it out to a PDF or to a printer or whatever. So, so that's really what I'm going to talk about uh, uh, either this week or if everybody's really into it, I'll go. I'll just keep skipping through them. Um, but since only half you, half you don't have computers, maybe that's not such a good idea. Um, but anyway. So Revit 2015 itself should look something like this. Now, my screen is going to be a bit squashed because the resolution of the projector is less than the resolution of your computers. So when I put it up here, it's going to be squashed. So there's things that, that will, won't display exactly the same way uh, on, your, um, on your machines. Um, but uh, effectively, <coughs> what we have here, over here, there is uh, a series of small videos, extra videos. There's videos all over the place for Reddit. Uh, the, the, the key with it is, <coughs> is not to get bogged down in hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of videos. Um, so I have also, just while we're on that subject, if we go into uh, Fronter, if the web is working, hello, is everybody's internet working? Yeah. Mine is not, maybe I'll need a cable. Anyway, if you guys can get into Frontier, I'm not going to try and get into it right now. If it you, can, you can use the public. Uh, can I use the public? Yeah. yeah. Let's try that one. So, first semester. And then GIT. Under lecture plan and videos, I've put a link to uh, a little website I've made. Uh, and this is, this is a website where I'm putting in the four modules of the, uh, of the course. They'll turn up here in terms of recorded lectures. So you can follow the lectures again at home if you want to. I only started doing this last year, so I started with the third semester, so um, if you want to go further, the, all the third semester videos are also in here, uh, as well as some stuff w related to the fourth semester and so, some stuff related to um, you know, more advanced bits and pieces. But uh, as we make each lecture in here, I'm going to add it to uh, module one initial setup, just under lecture plan, okay? So uh, hopefully you'll be able to follow this stuff that way. So that's that. Let's just close that and close that, and I'll keep that open for a while. Okay, so we, what we have here is the main opening page. Uh, we don't really need to worry about too much of the stuff. We've got videos over here. 
we've got a link to exchange applications and what they are are actually add-ons to Revit that do lots of different lots of different things. Um, there's one add-on I want to start using later in the semester where you, it allows you to find a site on Google Earth anywhere in the world and uh, export that site directly into Revit uh, in, in taking in all the contours and, and the site and all that kind of stuff and then you can start to make a model from that. So there's some very useful stuff in there that are add-ons to, to the Revit uh, situation. There's also the Revit community, which is just a lot of people going, how do I do this? How do I do that? Oh, this is how you do it and so on and so on. So this is quite helpful if you're, if you're ever stuck. Uh, and that, yeah, there's kind of that kind of stuff. There's basic skill stuff over here. The front page is kind of divided up into projects and families. Projects is your entire building, including your roads and your site and everything. Families are furniture, windows, anything that you, that's, you, know, that you need to design outside that you want to insert into your project afterwards. So those are the two basic uh, types of um, objects you can create in Revit. Projects and families. Uh, and this is a fairly uh, graphical way of doing it. Just while we're here, there's also an external uh, link here called Autodesk Seek. And what that does is, if you click on that, it'll bring you to Autodesk's own website where they have a list of products from uh, real uh, construction manufacturers uh, that have put uh, models of their products up on the website that you can download and insert. This is, this is into for Revit. This is for Revit, yeah. They have AutoCAD as well. They have AutoCAD and everything, yeah. So um, I'm, just, I'm just pointing it out. We'll talk about it in a bit more detail later on, but uh, it's here on the front page if you need it. It's also inside the program itself. We'll get, we'll get to that as we go on. Uh, yeah. On the top left here, by the way, if I'm talking too fast, just stick your hand up and uh, tell me to slow down because, uh, yeah, I always do that. Um, we have uh, projects, we can just start a project here, but uh, since we installed the, the template uh, for Kia, we have these three, uh, well, it's now four templates this year, but it used to be just three. So now we have architectural template, structural template, which is uh, beams and columns and you know, roof structures and so on. Systems template, which is you know, pipes and uh, toilets and wash and bays and so on. And uh, construction template, which is, um, which is really for designing projects for the construction process. Uh, to start off with, in the first semester, we're just going to talk about the uh, architectural template because we're just designing the building to start with, so we don't have to get any more complicated about it, okay? So I'm going to start a project. So I'm going to start off uh, architectural template, so I just click on that. And you should end up with something that looks more or less like this. Uh, on the left side, I have a project browser. And on the right side, I have a properties dialog. You could possibly have one on top of the other. You, could, you ha have the opportunity to drag them over and set them on top of each other or put them on wherever you want them to be. Uh, so if you don't have that, uh, like somebody just asked me, um, you can go into the uh, view panel up here, which is this chap. And right over on the far right-hand side, there's a button called user interface. If you open that up, you can get to switch on uh, <coughs> all the different elements of the uh, of the uh, the interface there. So I completely switched them off there. I can switch them back on again simply by just going like that. Okay. <coughs> In the center here, we have uh, something that's been set up for uh, for Kia. And it just allows you, it always opens up on this page, it allows you to very quickly see what project you're working on. So you can actually just click on this and type in the name of the project you want, the client, all that kind of stuff. So uh, I'll just type in, to start off, I'm just going to type in uh, first semester. And I'm going to call I'll be the client today. And I will, I will leave it like that. So this then not only updates on the this page here, but it updates throughout the project, the entire project. Yeah. Okay, that means that you uh, you either haven't installed the template, or you've op you've just opened a, a file without using the architectural template. I'll come down to you uh, afterwards. Okay. Okay. Now, the. Uh, the main drawing area, this is just, this is just a, a kind of a sheet. It's just like a, 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 you know, in principle, it's like a piece of paper just, just stuck on to say what's going on. 
If you want to get into drawing things, if you want to get into making a model, you need to go into a floor plan. That's probably the easiest way to do it. So <clears throat> it's automatically set up with uh, a level one, a level two, and a site level. So uh, I can go directly into uh, level one, and I can see in here it's completely blank. We have these uh, elevational symbols on all sides, and they reference an elevation drawing. So if I go into, what is this one, elevation four, it's taking a viewpoint from here, and it's looking across into where we're going to put the building in the middle here. So if I go into elevation four, it shows us the two levels, level one and level two, and the heights between them. But obviously we haven't started drawing a building yet, so there's no building in there, but, it's, but these are just reference lines showing the levels that, that they're at. Okay. So, what I'm going to do first of all, I'm going to set up a, uh, a grid, uh, and I'm going to do it on the site level, because I want it to be throughout the entire building. Okay. So I'm going to go to site. So I've double clicked on this, I've opened up the site drawing. These two cross lines down here, you don't need to worry about those. Those are just reference lines. Uh, they won't turn up in a print. They're just, uh, they've been put into the template. You can actually delete them if you want. So I'm just going to uh, select them and then press the delete button. And this here is a base point for your project in terms of uh, north, south, east, and west. Okay, so that's kind of the basic setup. Any questions about that before I get going? Well, yeah, okay. The elevations are then over here on the left under, under Project Browser. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. So, that's kind of the basic setup, but all we need to really worry about for the moment is uh, what is under the architecture tabs. So if you go up to the top of the screen and click on architecture, uh, and your, ta your, your panel here will look different to mine because it's been squashed for the, for the projector, but we have walls, we have doors, uh, windows, columns, roofs, ceilings, all the main elements of a building no matter how complex your, your project becomes, are contained in this architecture tab. You don't need any more than that in order to make the, the initial model. Um, uh, so, so this is really the key to pretty much the entire uh, modeling uh, situation. Structure we're not going to talk about in the first semester. Systems we're definitely not going to talk about in the first semester. Uh, and the rest of the stuff we'll, we'll use as we get to it. Okay. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a grid. And luckily enough, there's a little button over here that's called grid. So let's, let's use that button. So if, I, if you just leave your mouse on top of each button, there they usually comes a little video or a little note telling you what the button does. So that's quite helpful. And also uh, a keyboard shortcut. Uh, if, if you get really fast, you can start using keyboard shortcuts instead of, instead of the buttons at the top here. So I'm just going to draw this grid. And then I'm going to take a pause and answer any questions and give you a hand uh, uh, further. And then I'll start it off again, OK? I, I find a need to, because if people ask questions all the way through, we, we never reach the end. And some people are frustrated and so on and so on. So I'm just going to finish drawing the grid first of all. So I'm going to click grid. And once you click grid, you, start, you get these little uh, drawing tools up here. Uh, so we've got a straight line grid, we've got a curve with a start end radius, another type of curve, and then we have an option to pick existing lines. Uh, but we're just going to make a, a straight grid. And it's as simple as clicking where you want to start it, drawing it down, and you can see that it, it snaps uh, automatically to, uh, to vertical or horizontal, depending on what you want to do. So you don't have to be worried that it's going to draw slightly off at an angle. If you're used to AutoCAD, that's, that can be a problem where it draws slightly off at an angle unless you're very specific. So it's also giving us this 90 degree angle telling us that we're drawing exactly at 90 degrees. So then we can just click where we want to finish it. Double press escape, one, two, and that gets you out of the, uh, that gets you out of the grid command. If I roll my mouse button here in the middle, 
I can zoom in and see that it's actually made grid line one for me. And it's also made grid line one at the top. <coughs> if I want to make another grid line, I can very simply select this one and go up and use this copy tool. And I can click on where I want to start. And then I can say, well, let's say we want, to, want a grid uh, 1,200 millimeters. I can just type it in, press enter. And it's made another grid, and it's, it's automatically called it grid number two. Okay. <coughs> now, because we're, we're dealing with, um, we want to set up a, a module diagram which is based on what Niels is talking about. Uh, does anybody know? He's drawn it on squared paper. Does anybody know what the dimensions of those squares are? Are they 1,200 by 1,200? Are they 600 by 600? 300. Are they 300 by 300? Okay, so we're going to make a 300 by 300 grid. Okay, And I'm going to change the type of, of grid line because we want it to be maybe gray and in the background so we can draw on top of it so it's not going to disturb it. So I'm going to select this one here. And I'm going to go over and say, Edit Type. I'm just going to do that again because this is actually the key. Yeah, this is. I'm going to do it again. This is the key to uh, lots of stuff in Revit. Is that if you want to change it to a different type of grid or a different type of wall or a different type of window, you select it first. You select the grid or the wall or the window, then you can come over. Automatically, the properties dialog opens up over here related to the grid, and we can go and click on this button here, Edit Type, and that'll put us into a dialog showing the properties of that grid. Okay. And this is the same no matter what you're dealing with in Revit. It's always the same process, okay? It's like AutoCAD like you more or less? Uh, there is a lot of, there's a lot of similarities to, to AutoCAD, yeah. There is a lot of similarities, yeah. Uh, I can almost not remember AutoCAD. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm going to make a new type of grid. So if I change these settings now, I'm, I'm going to change this, uh, this, this type, and I want to make a new type. This, this grid type that we're using is called 2.5 millimeter text. Uh, I don't want to use that one. I want to make a new one. So I'm going to press duplicate. And I'm going to call this one uh, module. Module grid. And press OK. And if you remember from the grid we, we drew, it's got some grid heads in here showing the numbers. We don't need that because we're just using this as a guideline. So I'm going to switch off all the grid heads. Don't want any grid heads. I'm going to change the type of line to, uh, uh, sorry, no, I'm going to, I want to change the, I can't see up on the screen here, I'm going to, a second pattern, okay, I'm going to change the color, I'm going to just make it uh, kind of gray, and we have a lot of different options for types of, uh, for types of, um, line in here. These are all different types of lines. So I'm just going to change it to a stippled line. At the moment the line is, is kind of a, a dash and then a small, smaller dash and then a dash again. I'm just going to change it to more dotted versions. And I'm going to switch off all the symbols. Now let's see what that's done. So now you can see I've made a new type of grid line here. And if I select it again you can see it's called module grid. Now, because I've set up that new type, I can, uh, well, it's a 300 grid you were saying, yeah, that, that Niels has used, yeah, okay. So I'm going to delete this one we made earlier. <coughs> and I'm going to show you something called the array command. So I'm going to select grid line. And I'm going to, we can either copy it or we can use this called array tool. And what the array tool does is it effectively does a lot of copies for you. You just tell how many you want, what direction you want, and it'll do it for you. Okay. This little panel up here of all these little tools, this is kind of pretty key. So uh, I'm going to go through these in a lot of detail as we go through the next few days. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to array. We don't need to group it because we don't want it to be all together. You can see we have the option to make a straight array, a linear array, or we can array it around in a, uh, in a curve. I'm going to make, uh, <coughs> how many will I make? Let's make uh, 40. 
And now all we need to do is click on where we want it to start. And we need to type in, first of all, make sure we're going perpendicularly and type in 300. <coughs> and so now it's made a kind of a, a grid line in one direction for us. I think um, the, the basic model he said he thought of was 300. Yeah. Uh, but, but in his drawing, it's 600. That's okay. I mean, all the constructions pretty much in Europe are based on some kind of 300, 600, 900 module. So if we set up 300, it'll work for, for anything, okay? <coughs> so now I'm just going to repeat the process. I'm going to do it in the, in the other direction. So I'm going to go to the architecture tab, go over to grid. Uh, we don't want the 2.5. We want the module grid we've just made. And uh, I'm going to start at the top here. Does it make it automatically in the same way that you made the last one? Yeah, because we've we've made a new type of, of uh, we've made a new type of grid, so it's saved it as a type. Oh, okay. uh, so if I, for example, I can switch between it, so I can go and select this type. You can see it's called modular grid, which oh, is the name okay. I gave it. If I could press this, I can change it to uh, this one here, which is a different type. So it just saves the same. It the just same one. saves it. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So select it <coughs> and change it back to module. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the same process, select this, I'm going to use the array tool, and I'm going to, what did we say, we want it to be straight, we want it to be, what did we say last time, 40, and we want it to be 300, so I'm going to select it, and I'm going to go down by 300, so there we go, so now we have basics of it. Now let's let's assume that uh, the house we're making is going to be contained within those those areas. We can actually grab the ends of the, of the grid and drag them. Until it lines up a little bit. Okay. You can cut as well. You can use one, one line to cut the other. Yeah, yeah, you can, yeah, yeah, you can, yeah. Uh, but uh, grids, grids are a little different. They don't react the same way oh, okay. because they have other functions. Uh, for example, if you wanted to put columns in, you could say, well, I want, to, I want to put columns at this intersection of these grids, and all you need to do is select the grids, and it'll just do it for you. So it's not, it's not just a line. In AutoCAD, it would be a line, but uh, it's got a different quality in this. Okay. Uh, <coughs> okay, so I'm just going to pause that and... Uh, all right, so now we've got something like this. And actually, I think what I'll do is I'll change this. I want to make this a solid, uh, a solid line. So I'm just going to select it again, uh, go up to Edit Type, and I'm going to change the line type in here. So, will I do that again? <coughs> just select one of them. Go over to the Properties palette over here, and press Edit Type. And then under end segment pattern we have the line types we can just open that up and there's a lot of different line types in there they all have nonsense names but don't worry about that for the moment you can create your own line types these are line types a lot of them that are set up by the Danish uh, BIPs which is like their um, information organization in uh, construction so I'm just going to change it to a solid line and I think I'll just change it to uh, red yeah uh, can we change the background to black? Um, is it black? That's a good question. Nobody's ever asked me that before. I don't know. Because why change the very, very here? Yeah, I mean, uh, if you're used to if you if you're used to AutoCAD, yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've got used to it now. I used to use AutoCAD with black all the time. I've got used to it. I don't know. It doesn't bother me anymore. Um, but you should certainly if if it's in there, it'll be it'll be uh, it'll. It'll be here. It'll be here under uh, options, <laughs> which is vertical. If you press this, uh, the or at the top here, down here to the options, that's probably you'll probably find it in here somewhere. User interface, something. I'm not going to talk about it very much. Okay, so now we've got uh, some kind of grid line at 300 millimeters. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get uh, one of um, Niels's uh, houses. So I have Niels' uh, document here. So uh, <coughs> let's, uh, 
Let's find one of the plants. Uh, you don't have to do it now, but um, yeah, I think so. Okay, so um, all I'm going to do is I'm going to select one of these. I'm going to save it as a picture, and I'm just going to put it on my desktop. I'm going to call it Niels One. So if I go now. Back to sort by, take modified. There it is. There. So we have an image. Yeah, you don't need Photoshop. It'll, it'll open something else. Something else. Right? So now, one thing I'm not sure about is if Revit accepts that type of file. But let's give it a go. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to try and insert the picture directly into uh, into Revit here. So I'm going to go insert, and I'm going to go image. It will ask me. It will ask you every now and then. Do you want to save the project? Usually, say yes because it does crash quite a lot. So I'm just going to call this uh, first. Sam. I'm just going to put that on the desktop as well. Okay. <coughs> so import image. There's Niels's drawing, and we can just bring it in. And so now it's come into. Uh, it's coming to Revit. We can scale it and move it around until it looks like uh, something we want to use. So what I would suggest is that we uh, we try and get these squared lines. And what has he got? He's got these are these are relevant to 900 on his drawing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this over. corner like that. Now, it's difficult for me to see this on the screen, but let's see if we can uh, make this work. So once we've inserted it, we need to get it to the scale that we want it to be so we can draw it to scale within Revit. So I'm just going to select it, and we can use the uh, scaling tool, which is this one up here. Resize the selected item. And down at the bottom, Revit is asking, is, is asking us, well, it usually asks us, let's see what it's doing. Scale. And we're going to take it from here. Ah, I think I need to do this on the screen. I can't really see it up there. Let's just give it one more go. Select it, scale, and I got from here, drag point from here, and I'm going to type in 900. Let's just see if that worked. Kind of. So if we move that around, it's a little bit too big. A little bit more, yeah. So let's just do that again. I realize this isn't making much sense, but it's, uh, I'm going to do it a few times because uh, I c it's difficult for me to do just on the screen here. Uh, let's just try it. So I'm selecting the image. Select the image like that. Then go up to the scaling tool. We then enter the origin point, as in where do you want the image to scale from. So I'm going to enter the origin point from here. I'm going to enter the end of where we're thinking about scaling it from, which is here. And you can see at the moment it's 1,000. So then I'm going to type in uh, 900 instead. So now it should have been reduced close enough to 900. So it should line up with the, with the grids that we've made for, for the house. OK. Let's just change these grids so that they don't uh, cover up everything. Don't worry, this has all been recorded, so you can have a look at it later. OK. So maybe we should have, rather than making it a 300 grid, what, maybe make it a 900 grid to start off with, because I think we've got too many grid lines in there. It's going to start covering up the drawing. 
Okay? So let's just do that again as an exercise. Can we, uh, is it better to lock the grids? Yeah, we can, we, can lo we can lock them afterwards, but I wasn't sure how much we needed. So I just wanted, first of all, to show you how to do the grids, and now we can play with them a bit, okay? So I'm just going to uh, get this aligned. Can you insert, like, the picture first and then, like, sort of block it? Like yeah, yeah. You can do it either way around. The, the it's like, sorry, Shane. Yeah. You don't understand. But uh, you can draw in, in units, okay? For example, yeah. one other. Yeah. One meter. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. But so in the layout, you can scale in, in, in what you want. Yeah, you can, yeah. Okay. What, what I'm saying is if we want to take this exact drawing into, uh, into Revit, yeah. you can either read it off the page and draw it laboriously, or you can just trace on top of it. And that's yeah, much, much faster. Precise. It's precise enough. Yeah? Yeah, it's precise enough okay. to start with. To start yeah, with. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if we've set up a grid and we have a grid on the drawing beneath, uh, and if the two of them more or less line up, it's a very quick process to, to trace out into, into Revit, if you know what I mean. What I'm going to what I'm going to do now, I'm actually I'm actually going a little bit backwards here. Is that I'm going to change the grid because uh, I thought I thought Niels had drawn it in 300 grids, but he's drawn it in 900 grids. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to very quickly change it to a 900 grid. Mm -hmm. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select the image and I'm going to pin it. So now it's locked. So now we can't delete it by accident. That's right. Yeah. Uh, Okay, so you can see this little pin here pops up. Uh, you, can, you can pin or unpin, but what it means is now I can't select this and delete it. It'll say pinned objects were not deleted. So it means that you don't automatically or accidentally delete anything. So now I'm just going to select all this. That's with, um, like Right button of the mouse? What I'm going to do is uh, select it with the left button, right click, and then you get all these options. So what we can do here is we can select all instances in view or in project. So if I say in view, it's going to select all those grid lines. Okay? <coughs> like that. And then I can just delete them. So now I'm going to go through the process again just because it's good to repeat things. So grid. We've got the module grid is already set up. I'm going to start drawing the grid from here to here so it fits directly. I'm going to move it so it's more or less, it seems more or less on the lines according to what Niels has drawn. <coughs> then we're going to use the array command again. I'm going to go up by 20. And I'm going to go from here, and I'm going to go up by 900. So now we've got now we've got grid lines that, that correspond with his grid lines, more or less, close enough. I'm going to do the same thing again. Grid. I'm going to draw it down. Yeah. And then I'm going to array. 20. Actually, let's make it 30 this time around. <coughs> so you can see that it's, it's close enough that you could trace the building layout over, uh, over the, uh, the building beneath. Okay? Does that make sense? This is all recorded anyway, so... Now, what time are we at? Okay, we've got 20 minutes. Just to get started, before we start drawing in, the, uh, in this space here, I'm just going to show you how you produce something that can be printed. Uh, if, you said, if you wanted to print this out, for example, with a sketch on it, we, what we, we can make a, uh, a new sheet. And a sheet is what is, it's effectively just a piece of paper. If you're used to using AutoCAD, it's, it used to be called paper space. But this is, it's, in, in Revit, it's called a sheet. And all the stuff sits down here on the left. Okay, so over here we have some sheets. The one we have at the moment is the splash screen, which is the screen you see when you, uh, when you open up Revit for the first time. That's also a sheet. You can print that out. But I'm just going to set up a new sheet. 
And the way you do that is you select on Sheets, you right click, New Sheet, and you get an option to set up a, a number of different types of sheets there. Let's just use uh, this one to start off with. So you can see it's set up like an architectural drawing. It's got a drawing number. Uh, it's got the name of the project and the client that we put in at the beginning. And in order to transfer any of the work that we've done in the project so far into it, it's as simple as grabbing the view that we are working on. I think we were working on site view, weren't we? Yeah, site view. So I can go back into the sheet back down here again. I can grab site view and drag it over and it turns up in the sheet like that. Now you can see it's too big for the sheet. So we have the option to change the scale of it to whatever we want over here. So you get it to a scale that will print out on a sheet like that. Is that simple enough? Any questions about that? <laughs> so, uh, if we go to level one, what do we got? If your view has disappeared from the sheet here, it's, it's usually to do with the organization of, of the sheet view on the top here. Uh, so I'm just going to change this, going to right click on this, change the browser organization <coughs> to all, apply, and then it comes back again. <coughs> so I'm going to go back to the side view. Now, if I want to start drawing the wall, it's as simple as selecting a wall, choosing the wall we want. We can choose whether to draw to the wall center line, the, the, the very middle of the wall, or we can draw to the uh, interior finish or whatever we want and then we can just start drawing if I press space it'll switch to the outside like this <coughs> and uh, you can see how quickly you can um, set up a house <coughs> sorry yeah I selected the interior uh, I can't read this drawing, but um, <laughs> let's 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 make some assumptions. <clears throat> that goes up here. <coughs> so then we've drawn the entire external wall of the house, uh, and you can see the 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 beauty of using the grid lines is that we can just snap directly to the junctions between the grid lines without having to worry about the direct you know the exact measurements and so on. If we want to draw the internal walls, we can just select wall again. We can come over here to the uh, property selector and we can choose a different type of wall. I'm just going to choose generic walls at the moment, so 150 millimeters. I'm going to draw it from here. Actually, I'm going to change that. I'm going to do it again. <coughs> it's a thinner wall. It's just a thinner wall. But it's just to show you the different, different walls to start with. So I'm going to say uh, finish face interior again. And I'm going to press space to flip it so it's coming on that side. <coughs> so you can see that uh, very quickly we can set up the, the main the basic layout of the house. Okay. If you've done that, you can select this here, and you can select uh, hide in view, and you're just left with the, uh, with the drawing of the house. I think that's enough for today. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember that?